Good afternoon and welcome to today's telematics accounting road course. Today we do especially doing focusing on the grade 11s and we will be doing the statement of comprehensive income for grade 11s and especially partnerships. So a big welcome to the grade 11s. I hope you're snugged in front of the broadcast center and watching what we're doing. Okay. Today we're looking at partnerships and many of these questions will either be tested in paper one or in paper two. But if you have a look in your activity book, we have indicated so that you can see that these topics are specifically for paper one and for paper two. So if we have the telematics activity book in front of us, today we're doing activity number one. Right. So that will be something to do with the ledger, the statement of comprehensive income, as well as notes to the financial statements. Okay. So when we have a look at what we're doing, it's going to be activity one, and that's the, we will find it in the activity book as well as in the workbook. So for simplicity's sake, we've divided the, the activity into different topics or blocks or tables so that you can follow carefully when we're doing these broadcasts. Okay. So the first thing we have to look at is what is it do they want, right? So that will be our first block where it says briefly explain the purpose of the statement of comprehensive income, which was once upon a time called an income statement. So we no longer call it an income statement. We now call it a statement of comprehensive income. But what is the purpose of that income statement or the statement of comprehensive income? Well, as you can remember from last year, we obviously wanted to calculate the financial result, which is either the profit or the loss that the business has made. So one of those answers can obviously then be to determine the profit or the loss for a specific accounting period or a specific financial year. So that is one, one of the answers to be, to determine the profit or the loss for a particular year. Okay, so we've got to determine the net profit or loss for the accounting period. Remember, a net profit is when we have our income exceeding our expenses. And the loss will be when our expenses are exceeding our income. Okay? That's one of a possible answer. There could be more other answers. Like, for example, we could say it's to report about the financial result, again, which is just the net profit or the net loss to the owners. So the statement of comprehensive income gives you your financial result, which is your net profit or your net loss. So when we're talking about financial result, we're referring to the net profit, and that we'll find in the statement of comprehensive income or the old income statement. Another possible answer was we wanted to report to the, to the readers or the people that's going to use the financial statements on how the financial result was calculated. Again, that was just to calculate the profit. Okay? So those could have been any of those three answers was briefly explain the purpose of the statement of comprehensive income, or also used to be called the income statement. Okay? Right, then learners, let's look at the second block, what they give us, and we look at the information that they're giving us. So that is what you'll find in your answer book and the items in red you'll find in your activity book. Okay. What they want us to do is they're giving us a net profit. Then we have to do some adjustments to the net profit so that we can go and calculate the correct net profit after the adjustments was done. So some of these adjustments will either increase the net profit, then we have to show them without the bracket, or some of these adjustments will decrease the net profit and then you have to put a minus or you have to indicate in brackets to say that will, they will decrease the net profit. Okay? So when we're looking at that, the first thing you have to look at is what information should we take into account so that we can determine those adjustments. So again, it's going to be this. We're going to start with the 515,700 plus or minus the adjustments and then we're going to get to the correct net profit over there. Okay? So the first item they're talking about is partner Fraser 
so that's one of the partners, took stock, so the item they're talking about is trading stock. So if the owner took stock for his son's birthday, then we're referring to as drawings for the, that particular partner, and in this case it was drawings Fraser. So what will happen to the drawings of Fraser? His drawings will increase with 5,000 rand. Careful, not the 7,500, because the partners are taking the trading stock at the cost price, at what they paid for it and not what they want to sell it for. Okay? So whenever the partner takes anything, it will always be at cost price. So they're giving us a figure of 5,000 and they're giving us a figure of 7,500. They want us to distinguish between which one are we going to use when we make the first adjustment. Okay. So they're talking about stock, so therefore our stock will have to decrease with 5,000. So for the item, as soon as they're talking about stock, I have to indicate maybe they want to talk about the trading stock deficit. So the expense that they're talking about will be trading stock deficit. But I need to make a few adjustments again. So we're going to start with the 210,000, but I just need to read all those adjustments first and then see what's going to happen. So the first one was where the partner took 5,000 rand for his son's birthday. So I will have to add that 5,000 rand to the drawings of that particular partner, Fraser. And in the meantime, I'll have to adjust my amount in the books with minus 5,000. So now, next to my trading stock, I will have to minus 5,000. Right. Then they've got the second adjustment where it says obsolete stock, which means that's of the older stock with a cost price, was donated. So now we have an item called donations, and we're giving from our stock. So again, in the first one, we had to minus 5,000 from the trading stock, and we had to add 5,000 to your drawings. Now we have an item called donations, and we're donating it from our trading stock. So again, our trading stock will decrease with 5,000 first, and then it's going to decrease again with 1,800. In the, the third adjustment is where they're talking about the trading stock valued that we can count. So that 180,200 is the physical stock take. We send the people into the warehouse, they're going to count the stock. And they got a physical amount of 180,200. 180, so now when we look at the first adjustment, we have to get the trading stock deficit. So I started with the 210,000. I minus the 5,000 that was that the owner took for his son's birthday because my stock is decreasing. I also minus the 1,800, the stock that I sent as a donation. Then I minus the 180,200. Then my answer will be the trading stock deficit. In other words, 23,000, that's the value of the trading stock that is unaccounted for, and we assign that as an expense, and we call that expense trading stock deficit. There are various reasons why there's a trading stock deficit, but that will we'll do it when we do the internal control purposes and the internal controls regarding the stock. But at the moment, because there is a loss or there is a, a deficit of 23,000, we have to indicate that the 23,000 will have to go in brackets because it will decrease my, my profit. Okay, remember? So now I'm bracketing that 23,000 because that will decrease my profit. But then also, I must use that same information to record the donation of 1,800. Because that donation of 1,800 will be seen as an expense to the business because we're giving a donation. So that donations will also be, will also be regarded as an expense and that will also decrease the net profit. Okay, so the first one was to calculate the deficit 
of 23,000 of our practice debt. Then the second one is the donations and I will bracket that. Okay. So now I have exhausted that information. So I don't need the, all I need, I must later, when we do further, we need to work with the 5,000 again, but that 5,000, like I said, we have to increase the drawings with the 5,000. So later on, we need to come back to this 5,000. So all we have to do, we do have to add 5,000 to the drawings of Fraser's account. Okay, so we don't need that information anymore. Okay, so let's take that away. And let's, let's see what's the next information that they're giving us. Then they're also talking about interest on a favorable balance, which we know could also be called interest received, and it can also be called interest income. And ultimately, it will appear in your statement of comprehensive income at the bottom with a note, because all the interest will be kept separately. It won't form part of the normal income or the normal expenses. But in this case, it's just interest that you have received, so it can also just be called interest income. So that 600 rand will increase my profit. So my line item is going to be called either interest on favorable current balance, or you can just call it interest income. And the amount will just be interest received, and that amount will just be 600 rand. And because it's an income, it will increase my net profit. So that's why I saw the figure without brackets. Okay, so I've, I've done the interest. Then we're moving along. Then we're looking at bank charges. And there's no other adjustment, but as we know, that bank charges forms part of the operating expenses. That is what the bank is charging us for delivering the service, for cashing the checks, for the deposit, for the deposit book, the service fee, the credit card levy. The bank is charging us a fee, and we call that bank charges. So that bank charges will then obviously decrease my net profit. And that is why I have that 1,200 in brackets indicating it will decrease my net profit. Okay, then the next one, we just have to look a little bit to see what has happened over here. It's a dishonored check, which normally we say refer to drawer, of 1,400 that we received earlier from a debtor in settlement of his account of 1,600. So why are those two figures then different? What is the difference between those two figures? So clearly we can see the difference between the 1,600 and the 1,400 must have been the discount that we gave the debtor because he settled his account. But now, because his account or the check has bounced or it's being dishonored, he's no longer eligible to get the discount. So we have the item now called discount allowed that is normally an expense. But that discount that we gave him earlier, we now have to take back the discount because he hasn't settled his account because the check that he gave us has bounced or it was dishonored. So clearly he cannot qualify for the discount that we gave him and that that discount was a discount of 200 rand, which is the difference between those two. When we gave him the discount, we recorded the discount as an expense. But now we're cancelling the discount or we're taking the discount back. Now, although discount allowed is an expense, but because we are cancelling it, we will not have to add back that 200 rand because we're making our discount allowed less. So that 200 rand will actually increase my net profit. Okay, so that's, we don't record the 1,400 anyway. Over here, we only want to work with the difference between the two, and the difference between the two is called the discount. Okay. But what we have to remember now is, when we get to the debtors, that, that will obviously affect the debtors as well. Okay, so now we'll have to add back the 1,400 by the debtors, and we'll have to add back the 200 to the debtors. So in essence, we are adding back 1,600, but we just have to sell them separately. 
Okay. Then the last adjustment is the one where they're talking about provision for bad debts. So we should know as soon as they talk about provision for bad debts, then the item that should go to the income statement should be provision for bad debts adjustment, which we have over there. It's very important that you have provision for bad debts adjustment because the provision for bad debts is the balance sheet item. But the provision for bad debts adjustment is the nominal account item. So that will either increase the net profit or it will decrease the net profit. So at the moment, in my activity book, we're looking at the item for provision for bad debts. So right at the bottom, they've got a figure there of 7,500 for the provision. So now they're saying that provision must be adjusted to, it must become 8,000. So we have to move from 7,500 to 8,000. So we have to move from 7,500 to 8,000. Clearly it's getting more, and when the provision is increasing, then the amount becomes an expense. So that 500 rand, that extra amount that we have to write off now, the extra provision we have to make, the 500, that now becomes an expense, and that is why we have brackets around them. You just have a look to see how we indicate those ones. If it's going to decrease the net profit, we have to put them in brackets. If it's going to increase the net profit, we clearly show them without brackets, or we can also put a plus next to them, and then similarly we can put a minus next to the items that's going to decrease. And all we have to do, we just have to start with the 515,700, plus, minus, plus, minus, and then we get the correct net profit. Okay, and that's just a bit of calculator work. But while we're doing that quickly, we can just see that we're going to start with the 515. Minus the 23,000, minus the 1,800, plus the 600, minus the 1,200, plus the 200, and minus the 500. So it's very careful, although the discount is normally an expense, but because we're cancelling it, we now have to add the discount. And then we get an answer of 490,000. Okay, so that is what the first block in your, or the second block in your answer book was going to look like. Okay, so we're going to look for the adjustments and then you have to fill in each line item. Increase the net profit without the bracket, decrease the net profit with a bracket or a minus next to it, and then for you to calculate the correct net profit. It's just after all the adjustments was done, we calculated the, the correct net profit. Then what's going to happen, grade 11, we're going to use that net profit now further in the activity. So now we're assuming that the 490,000, that is the correct net profit, now we're going to use it further in the activity. And that is why we're going to start, when we're doing, it says with 1.3, you have to do the appropriation account. So now our net profit will be 490,000 that you have to start your appropriation account. So when we look at the third block that we have to show in our workbook, we have to start with the 490,000, remembering that is now what we have calculated in the previous block. Okay? So when we look at that, that is what they've got. They've got a general ledger account, and they're giving us the appropriation account to do. Now, the appropriation account just means this is how the net profit, remember that net profit of 490,000, how that net profit is going to be apportioned or it's going to be appropriated or it's going to be divided amongst the partners. Okay, so what they're saying, in the, the block in red is the information that we need so that we can complete your appropriation account. Okay, so there we go. Right, it says the partnership agreement provides for the following. They've got the partner gray, They've got a salary of 120000 and it is per month. Now remember, although you're thinking that salary and for Gray and the salary to Fraser are normal expenses, you do not show them in the profit and loss account or in the statement of comprehensive income. You show them separate because they belong to the partnership. 
So those will be, this will be a charge against the net profit that you have already calculated. So you don't put, put these items in the normal income statement or statement of comprehensive income or in the profit and loss account. You take them to the appropriation account because they belong to the partners and this is how the 490,000 is going to be apportioned or appropriated. So when we're looking at the appropriation account, so we've got the profit and loss figure that is the net profit on my credit side and everything else is going to appear on my debit side. So I've got the salary of grey, so I need that figure of 120,000. Then they've got salary for Fraser of 6,000 rand per month. But I need the figure for the year or for per annum. So I need to take 6,000 times 12, and that's going to give me 72,000. Then also it says that they have a bonus. So it's going to be a bonus to Fraser of 5,000. Okay, so that was the information that we needed. The only little bit of work that we had to do there was just to take the 6,000 and you had to multiply it by 12 to get to the 72,000 because we want the figures for the year, like the 120,000 and the 72,000. And that's just a bonus that he gets because he's doing extra work in the partnership. Okay? He might be the bookkeeper or he might be doing the legal services. So he's getting some bonus for that, for those services that he's doing. Okay? But remember, it's all figures for the year. That's why we had to multiply the 6,000 by 12. Okay, let me looking at that. Okay, that was the bonus. Okay, we don't need that information. Then they've also got part of the agreement, and it says they're talking about the interest on capital. Okay, so it says interest on capital is 10% per annum. Okay, so for this, I need to show you how to calculate the interest. Okay, so what we're looking at, the interest, we need to look at the partner's capital. So from the information, I can clearly see that what I need to do is I need to draw a timeline to find out when does the financial year start, which they're giving us. So it's the 1st of March 2018. And the financial year ends on the 28th of February, 2019. Okay. Then I need to look at what the capital story is. Right, so as we can see, it says the capital for Fraser is 600,000. So they're telling me capital Fraser is 600,000. But is that 600,000 at the beginning of the year or is that 600,000 at the end of the year? The adjustment or the information will tell me what has happened with Fraser. So we know the figure that we have in the trial balance is 600,000, but they're telling me under the information that Fraser has increased his capital by 50 and this was recorded, which means on the 1st of September, on the 1st of September, he added 50,000 to his capital. So it became 600,000. So that means at the beginning of the year, his capital was 550,000. Right, and when did he increase it? He did this on the 1st of September. So that means that I need to count the number of months from the 1st of September, from the 1st of March until the 1st of September. Because it's the 1st, you do not count September. You only count until the 31st of August. Okay. So this side will be six months. That means this side will also be six months. So for the first six months of the year, for the first six months of the year, his capital was 550,000. And I must multiply that with the percentage that they give me. 
which is 10%. Right, so I'm going to go 550 times 10%, right? Times 6 over 12, that's for the first six months. Then for the second six months, because he added the 50, it became 600. So on this date, his capital was 550,000. But on this date, his capital was 600,000. But it became 600,000 when he added the 50. So it's 600,000 for the last six months. So this calculation will be 600,000 times 6 over 12 times 10%. So this gives you a total of 30,000. And this one gives you a total of 27,500. So the interest on capital For Fraser is twenty seven thousand five hundred plus the thirty thousand, and that gives you fifty seven thousand five hundred, which was just twenty seven thousand five hundred plus the thirty thousand that we calculated. So let's just have a look at that calculation again there, grade eleven. Just remember, it was 550 at the beginning, but they gave us the capital figure at the end, and they told us that the 50,000 was already recorded, meaning that the 50,000 was included in the 600,000. Therefore, at the beginning of the year, the capital had to be 550. They added the 50, and it became 600,000. So now I have to show two separate calculations. For how many months was it? 550 multiply with the percentage. For how many months was it 600 multiply with the percentage? Add your two answers together, and that will be the interest on capital for Fraser. Okay. In the interest on capital for Gray, it's just straightforward because his capital, capital for Gray. His capital is 800,000. And they're not mentioning any increase or decrease. They're just saying that his capital is 800,000. That means his capital was 800,000 for the whole year. So his interest on capital, the simple calculation, is 800,000 times 10% times 12 over 12 which you actually don't need because that's going to equate to 1. That's going to cancel itself. So his interest on capital will just be 80,000. Okay. So now we're looking at what's the total interest on capital. The interest on capital for Fraser is 57. And the interest on capital for Gray is 80,000. I add those two figures together, I get my interest on capital of 137,500. Let's just have a look again at those calculations so that we just make sure that we know how to do them. I just remember the easy one is when there was no increase or decrease, so that was just a straightforward calculation. So that was 80,000, that was for, for gray, that was for interest on capital for gray. The one where there was an increase, I need to draw my timeline and make sure that I understand for how many months was it 600,000 and for how many months was it 550,000. But what's important is that the words in the activity, they will tell you whether the 50,000 was recorded or was not recorded. Okay? So you need to read carefully. How do I know that the 50,000 is included? It's because they said that the 50,000 was already recorded. So you mustn't start with 600,000 at the beginning. 
the capital at the beginning was 50,000 less than what it was at the end. That's why we say 600 minus the 50 to give me the 550. Okay. So we're going to come back to those calculations because we might need them later when we go further on into the activity. But for now, the total interest on capital is just 137,500. Okay. Then the last part is normally the part where the learners think where it says the remaining profit are shared between Gray and Fraser in the ratio 4 is to 1. Okay, so what that means, it does not mean that you must go take the 490 and do the ratio. It means whatever money is left over, in other words, the 490 minus all of those and what's left over, it says, remaining profit or losses. In other words, remaining whatever is left over. In other words, take my 490 minus all of them, and then you split them into the ratio for east to one. Okay. So what do we have to do over there? We have to start with 490,000. So I'm going to have my 490. That's my net profit. I'm looking for the remaining profit. I want my remaining profit. So now I have to minus the 120,000. I also have to minus the 72,000. I have to minus my 5,000. And I have to minus 137,000. 500. So all of them I have to minus or I have to deduct from my net profit. Okay? And what I'm left over is what's important for us to do. So what we left over is we're going to take the 490 and minus all the 120, the 72, the 5,000, and what's left over we're going to split in the ratio. 4 is to 1. And that 4 is to 1 refers to Gray gets 4 portions and Fraser gets 1 portion of that total. In other words, 4 and 1 gives you the 5. So he's going to get 4 fifths and the other one is going to get 1 fifth of whatever is remaining. So what is remaining? It's going to be 155,000. So this, that comes to 354,500. So my remaining profit is just 490,000 minus 334,500. That gives me... 155,500. So this, the 155,500, this, that is what I have to apportion accordingly. So for grey, we're going to go 4 over 5 times 155,000. 500. Right, and that is going to give us 124,400. Then for Fraser, he's going to get 1 over 5 times 155,500. That's going to give me 31,100. And together, they must add up to 155,000. Or what I could have done to calculate the second one was just take the 155,000 minus the 124,400 
and that should get the 31,100. But together, they must add up to the 155. Okay? So just remember, it says the remaining profit. So you start with your net profit, which we have. You minus the salaries to the partners, the bonus, and the interest on capital. Okay? So these are the net profit calculation and the interest on capital calculation. These are the calculations that you should practice carefully so that you can get them correct in the exams. Okay? So the interest on capital and the remaining, how to calculate the remaining profit into a ratio, that's exactly what we need to do. Okay? So let's, now, do we need, now we need to complete the appropriation account. So remember, the one partner gets 124,000 and the other partner gets 31,100. So those figures will go to the current account. So it will be, that will be the share of the remaining profit. That will go to the current account. And then when we add them, it will be the same. The appropriation account will never have an opening or a closing balance. They appear in the final account section. So they will always should always be equal, which means that you will have to split this in, in this case it was in the ratio, four is to one. So that will be four fifths, and that will be the one fifth of the remaining profit. Remember, we got the remaining profit when we said 490 minus the 334,500, and that consists of all those items that appeared above them in the appropriation account. Okay, so that's what they want. So those are calculations that we need to make sure that we can master them so that we can do them correctly in the exams. Okay, so let's move on, see what's happening next. They're asking us just to reconstruct a current account of one of the partners, which is partner Fraser. Then we've got the information at the bottom. So now the information, or that's the information that we, that we calculated earlier. We said that he was supposed to get a, a salary of 6,000 rand per month, but we had to multiply them with 12 to get to 72,000. So some of this information will appear in your appropriation account. Right? As you can see, those are the figures seeing the remaining profit. Those are all the figures that we need. So how does the current account work? I see that everything that the partner receives from the partnership will appear on the credit side. And everything the partner withdraws will appear on the debit side. But the current account forms part of the owner's equity or the partner's equity because the partners are the owners of this business. So the current accounts form part of the owner's equity. So they will appear in the balance sheet section and ultimately it will have to go to the statement of financial position or what we used to call the balance sheet. Okay. So the current account is very important and there will be a note for current account which will just be a duplicate of the work that we are doing at the moment. So we need to take all of this information, we're saying everything they receive will go on the credit side and everything they withdraw will go on the debit side. So it could be that the opening balance can appear on the debit side or it can appear on the credit side and the closing balance can also appear on the debit side or on the credit side, depending whether they withdrew more than what they're supposed to have received or whether they have received more than what they have withdrawn. Okay? The information will tell you where the opening balance is and then we will have to calculate the closing balance. So if I'm looking at the information, it just says that Fraser has an unfavorable balance of 25,400. And you can see that that unfavorable balance appears in my debit column. So his opening balance will appear on the 1st of March, which is the beginning of the financial year. His opening balance will appear on the debit side because the previous year he has withdrawn more than what he has received and he has exceeded that amount by 25,400. He, he has withdrawn 25,400 more than what he's supposed to have. Okay, that's why it appears on the debit. 
So everything that he receives, in other words, all these items, whatever he receives, that will appear on the credit side. So he will be receiving a salary of 72000 You will be receiving a bonus of 5000 You will be receiving interest on capital of 57500 then he will also be receiving his share in the remaining profit, which we calculated earlier in the appropriation account, and that amounted to 31100 So we're not going to write the share in the remaining profit, we're going to write the appropriation, because the appropriation account ended with current account for Fraser and the current account. Then all we have to do, right, so those are all the items that they're receiving from the partnership. Receiving a month, monthly salary of 6,000 and multiplied it by 12. He received a bonus for extra services that he was doing. He received this interest on capital. We showed you how to calculate that. And he's receiving a share of the remaining profit. What has he withdrawn? So we need to put the drawings for Fraser onto the debit side. So where do we get the, ex the 90,000? is the figure that we have in the trial balance. Where do we get that extra 5,000, if you can remember? Right at the beginning, they said that he took stock for his son's birthday, so that will, be th that will increase his drawings, so that drawings became 95,000. So now we just have to balance, we just have to see, right, so far he's taken 120,000, that's my total on that side, 120. Clearly those two is already more than 120, so this will be my total. So that will be my totals, and then all I do, I just have to balance the account, thanks to date to the 1st of March, and then I balance the account. So the, you can see that his opening balance appeared on the debit side, because in the previous year, he withdrew more than what he has received. But now, he hasn't withdrawn such a lot, so that's why he still has a credit of 45200 we just have a look, just make sure that we can master either the current account or the second part that they're asking is they're asking us, as you can see, they're asking us current accounts. So what's going to happen is for Fraser, the closing balance is going to be 45,200. His opening balance is 25,000, and that's going to be the opening balance. So for Fraser... It will just be a duplicate of what we not just did earlier. Remember that 490,000? Then there was just a misprint in your answer book. That figure that was given had to be 350,600. So can you just please correct that? It's 350,600. Okay, that's 350,600. Right, the 490 was what you had to calculate right at the beginning because it says it's the profit as per income statement, but we call that statement of comprehensive income. Right, so we're looking at his salaries, his bonus, and his interest on capital. Those were those four figures together. Then all we do, we add those three, and we get his total of his primary, which was 134,500. His final distribution was the 31,100. So I'll take these two numbers, I add them, and I put the total on top. Those two, and there we go. That's your total of 165. So of that net profit that the business made, partner Fraser is getting or is earning 165,600. Of that net profit, his earnings is 165,600. And his earnings is made up of his salaries, his bonus, interest on capital, and his share of the net profit. Okay, that figure is just the sum of those three above that. Okay. What has he withdrawn? He has taken 95,500. And then the retained income. And then we get that figure at the end, 45,200. 
cut. And we do the same with the partner salaries for Gray. So 120. Remember, he never received any bonus. So it's just the 200,000 that he's distribute, his primary distribution. Add his final. These drawings was only 60. And then we just, we minus, right? So we take the 324 minus that. And then we get the balance at the beginning. That's given. There you can see that's a credit, that's a debit. So the totals will be different. All we're doing now, it's just a matter of totaling. Okay, right. So there you can see that will be the that figure should correspond with the balance in the current account. So if we're doing the current account of Gray, that would have been his figure over there as well. Okay. Then there's just another part of the question that we just have to look at, if this if there's still time quickly. It says that Fraser has worked long hours in the business for the past year and is not happy with his earnings for the business, explain why he might feel this way. Okay, so remember what has happened. His salary is less than that of Gray. He's earning 6,000 rand per month and Gray is earning 10,000 rand per month. Remember that Gray is 10,000 per month, but it shows us 120,000 and that is the 72,000. So he's earning 120 and he's earning 72. And even with his bonus, Gray is still more. Right? So that is why he's a bit unhappy, or he's feeling aggrieved. And then it says that Gray has withdrawn three times more the drawings. Remember, his drawings is more, and he's only getting 20% of the remaining profit, that one-fifth. And he is the only one that has contributed extra capital Remember, nothing happened to Gray's capital. His capital remained the same, whereas Fraser increased his capital by 50,000. So his salary is less. Gray has withdrawn three times more. He only receives one-fifth, and he's the only member who contributed the extra capital this year. Okay. And then it just says... So these two actions he should consider to solve his unhappiness. Quite a few of them. We can say that he must renegotiate the partnership to include the remuneration for the time spent or for extra services that was rendered. Or it can also just be agreed to the limit amount of the monthly drawing so we don't have the one partner withdrawing more than what he has received or request a more favorable split of the profit. In other words, instead of having it four is to one, we can maybe have it three is to two, or we can have it according to capital contribution. Or we can leave it because in the event that there's a loss, that gray will be the bigger share of the loss. Okay, so, but these are all things that we should consider if we want to change the partnership agreements. Okay, so we'll just leave that there for a few minutes there quickly and you can get that. Okay, right, grade 11. I think that was a um, very lengthy exercise that we have to do. But what's important for you is you can see that there's quite a few duplicates. So we won't be doing the current account and you'll be doing the note for the current account. So what's important is that you have to make sure that you are able to do the ledger, the current account, as well as the note for the current account that's going to form part of the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. I thank you very much for tuning in. 
for watching and listening attentively. Good luck with your mid-year exams and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye.